What's going on, everybody? It's me. It's Steve, the man, the myth, the um, insane lunatic who continues to make videos on how to program in a 35-year-old dead language known as BASIC on the Radio Shack TRS-80 Color Computer, also known as the Coco. And here's what I decided to do after realizing how much fun I had playing around with Russian Roulette and realizing that the purpose of this series is to make games... Um, before I go on to another chapter, I want to go ahead and make a better version of Russian Roulette. And then I want to also um, uh, probably make another game that's similar that we'll call Guess What I'm Thinking, where the computer will think of a random number and we have to try to guess it in a certain number of tries. So if you don't remember what we did with Russian Roulette, what I will do here is I will just go ahead and bring it up on the screen for your entertainment here. So if I go ahead and type in dir, and these are the files that we created, I believe it was called Russian. So if I do load quote Russian, this was that program. If I list it out, it's all here in all of its glory. And if I run it, this is it. And so there's a couple things wrong with this. Number one, it's not very fancy. Number two, it's got a chamber of 10 and to my recollection most of your old-fashioned pistols had a chamber of six but we're trying things out so I'm gonna to try to guess it one I didn't get it thank goodness two three four five and it got me now what I did is I changed the logic in this game from what was in the book because what happened was each time in the book it was picking a new random number so you could have possibly guessed your way all the way out of the game which isn't as realistic, right? But it was just, this is this was actually an enhanced version of the, the game that's in the book. I wanna go ahead and start from scratch. And so we're gonna clear out memory. But before we do that as well, I also wanna do something, cause I need to kind of think out loud as I'm doing this program. And rather than trying to relist it and keep going back and going back and forth, I'm gonna cheat a little bit and I'm gonna use Microsoft Excel as kind of a graph to help me write out some of my code and help me figure out some statements with print at. So what I'm gonna do real quick here is I'm gonna switch over to Microsoft Excel. And now, so now I'm kind of breaking away from what I originally decided with the series where I said, you know what, this, you're not gonna need anything special to do this. All you're gonna need is VCC and a PDF and you can do it. What I'm doing now, you don't have to do, but what I'm doing now is gonna help make my life easier. I need to highlight a whole bunch of columns and um, I need to make all these columns a column width of, let's just say, four. And so what I'm going to build for myself here real quick is a real cheat sheet that's going to help me figure out where all my print ats are. So the print at in my first upper left-hand corner is always print at zero. The next one over is one more than that. So I can say B equals A plus one. By the way, this is Excel uses formulas that are algebraic, very similar to how we do things in um and there goes 30 i gotta go one more 31 so i also have to change this column width to about column width four so what i have here is this is my first line of text i've got 31 columns here now the second line is going to be one higher than that so this line here is actually 32 more than the zero so i can say this equals that plus 32 and each one of these things here is going to be one higher so I can just drag this all the way over here and so now I can see my first row goes from 0 this through 31 my second row and by the way I could probably zoom in on this a little bit now too, get it bigger on the screen right so this is how your computer screen is is referenced and there's 16 of these so now I should be able to copy this paste it paste it right and there's 16 lines so if I keep going down to the number 16 Hopefully this will make sense in just a moment. And it brings me to 511. So what we're looking at here right now is this is my text screen. Let me go ahead and save this. I'm clicking on the wrong thing, right? So this is my text screen. I wanna go ahead and save this document right now. And it doesn't match the computer screen exactly because your computer screen is square. This is a little bit rectangular, but there are 32 columns. So here's your one, two, three, Here's your middle column, there's your end column. There's 32 columns. Every position is kind of linear in its numbering. So this is position zero, 
This is position 16. And this is going across horizontally on one line. As I'm going down vertically, it's basically 32 more than the one above it is that position. But if you imagine your computer screen as kind of a graph table, as I've done here, every single block has a number associated with it. I'll actually draw some, um, some borders around it if it makes it more visual, more visible, right? So if I do the old all borders thing here, so I've kind of um, done this, and if, if you need me to highlight this for you a little bit, if I was to highlight this row and make that yellow, and highlight this row and make that yellow. Um, I'm not sure if this is helping you see where the screen is. If I was to just kind of make a border around here. And if I highlight this and make this yellow. Um, basically what we're looking at here is that this is my computer screen. Every position on my computer screen has a number and I can kind of figure out where dead center is. So dead center is somewhere right around 16 and eight right so somewhere right around 240 is roughly dead center on my screen so this is going to be helpful for me when i want to print something on the screen in a specific location i can refer back to this what i'll also do is i will rename this tab to what i call print at don't worry about this if you don't know what the heck i'm doing and you don't have access to Microsoft Excel, don't worry about it. Just know that this is gonna be a cheat sheet for me and for you guys later to be able to figure out where things are on the screen. The second tab I'm gonna relabel and I'm gonna call this code, right? So I'm gonna rename this and call this code. And so what I'm actually gonna be doing right now with my code is I'm gonna be using this to think of the logic of my game. And I'm gonna say that these are imaginary line numbers. So I'm gonna say that this equals this plus 10. That gives me a 20. And I'm gonna to continue to drag this down. There's 240, there's 24 lines. We'll go down. I'm not sure how many lines we're gonna need, but right now I've given myself something like 39 lines for my code. So these are my imaginary line numbers. And then this is where I'm gonna type out my stuff in basic. And I'm actually gonna be thinking this through as I'm doing it, and hopefully it's gonna be easier to read. So we're going to basically recreate Russian roulette from scratch, and I'm gonna write the code from my head. I'm making this up as I go along, but I'm gonna basically use the commands that we've learned in the first eight chapters, or first roughly seven chapters, and put everything together and make this a fun game. So the first thing I thought I would do is I would start off by um, having an intro screen that was similar to old games in the color computer by Spectral Associates. So line 10 will say CLS um, RND8. So it's gonna pick a random number between one and eight and it's gonna clear the screen. When you clear the screen, your cursor is automatically positioned in the top left-hand corner and you can just start printing from there. So 20 is gonna say print quote um, what did I call my game? Um, now here's another thing is that um, color computer has to be in all caps. Russian, R-O-U-L-E-T-T-E, -E, 1.0, um, dash, by, and I think that's probably going to be too much text. So Russian let 1.0, 30 was a print, quote, um, copyright 2016. I don't want it to autocorrect that. So I'll just say, right now I'll do a C 2016 2016 Steve Strobridge. And then for line 40 for um, grins and giggles, which is what we know is not true, but this was a very common thing in Spectral Associates games. We'll say um, print quote, licensed to Tandy Corporation. All right, which is absolutely not true. It's not even copywritten, but who cares, right? So here's our, that is our um, that is our intro graphic. This was got three lines of text, right? So Russian Roulette 1.0, copyright 2016, Steve Strobridge, licensed to Tandy Corporation. So that takes up line three lines. I want to skip a couple lines on the screen. So I'm going to go back to my print at, and so my first three lines are 0, 32, and 64. Let's skip two lines. So what we're going to do down here is we're going to print at 160 which is around line um, six on the screen. 
So on line 50, I'm going to say print at 160 comma quote, what is your name? I'm not going to put a question mark in there. I'm going to put an I'm going to put a semicolon here, which is going to keep my printing mashed together. But in line 60, I'm now going to input end string for your name and it's going to ask you your name. So here's what's going to happen. I'm thinking um, at first, I'm going to clear the screen in a random color. I'm going to print my title Russian Roulette 1.0 copyright 2016 Steve Strawbridge license to Tandy Corporation. That should take up three lines on the top. I'm going to skip two lines on line six. It's going to say, what is your name? That will be followed by the input prompt. The input prompt automatically generates a question mark. So I don't have to print the question mark there. It's going to ask me my name. Now, um, let's go ahead at this point. Let's clear the screen. And we're going to clear the screen again in a random color. I like that. CLS random eight. Excel populated that for me right away. We're going to print some rules on the screen or some information. So um, I'm going to print quote um, you. OK, there is one bullet six. There's one bullet six chambers. Um, there's one bullet, six chambers. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to, we want to make some noise here. So we're going to, we are going to have it count to nine different times. So we're going to say that, um, let's just say that chambers equals random nine. Random nine. Um, Uh, chambers equals random nine line 100 say we'll say four t equals one to c for your chambers uh, line 110 we'll say print spinning barrel uh, how about we do it let's let's do this backwards okay so for c equals one to nine we're going to say print print quote spinning barrel do a semicolon there and then what we're going to do is that on line 110 we're going to say 4t equals 1 to c for the chamber i'm going to actually put a few more um, statements in here so i'm going to separate these by colons colon i'm going to say sound uh, sound 25 comma 1 colon print colon dot col uh, Getting way too far ahead of myself. Getting too fancy here. Let's let's let take it back. All right. So let's just do this. For t equals one to c. All right. We're picked a random number for how many times it's going to circle around here. Let's just do it one line at a time. All right. Line twenty is going to say print quote period semicolon. So they're going to stay together. And line thirty is going to say sound. I'm going to say twenty four comma one. Line 40 is going to say next C. So what it's going to say is there's six bullets, one chamber. It's going to pretend like it's spinning around. It's going to go, drrr, but you're going to see little dots going around as it's spinning. All right. Now we get into the main portion of the game. We get into the game cycle where we're going to start guessing. And because there's six chambers, there is going to be five tries. So for line 50, we're going to say for, um, and we can use T again. We can say for T equals no, actually, let's do this. Let's randomize what the bullet value is. So let's just say bullet equals RND six. We are going to pick a number between one and six where the bullet is in that chamber. And then um, we now are going to say, OK, uh, for T equals one, two, five. You're going to get five guesses to get this right. Uh, 170 print print quote try number semicolon t semicolon quote what um chamber what chamber semicolon okay what is that going to say? It's going to print the word try. It's going to print, print what try number we're on. So if we're on try number one, it'll print try number one. What chamber? Semicolon. Now we're going to input A for our answer. 
And okay, the next thing is gonna say, if A equals B, then go to, uh, right now I'm gonna put in the word here, whatever, because I don't know what line number that's gonna be. Then go to question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. I'll figure that out later. All right, so what's gonna happen here? We're gonna count, we're gonna do this five times. On try number one, it's gonna say what chamber? It's gonna input, it's gonna input A. You're gonna type in a number. Um, and then this and that together. Let me do one more thing here. Let me introduce you to a little bit of logic where you can't screw with the system. I haven't, the, the, the game, the, the manual hasn't introduced us to this yet, but I'm gonna go ahead and introduce it to you now. Here's a little if then conditional branch that's basically saying if you are trying to put in a number that's outside of the realm of possibilities, then go back. Um, so for 190, if A is less than 1 or A is greater than 6, then go to 170. So what this line here is going to be is if I wanted to cheat and I just typed in 0 each time, it would never answer the right thing. Um, and, and and that would be the that would be the that would be a problem in the game, right? So if I try to put in a different number, um, it's going to go back and say, nope, what chamber? So now that we've got that, now if your answer equals B, then we're going to go to um, the yes, you won routine. So this one now is going to be the one that says um, uh, print quote dash 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 click dash 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 um, and then so, uh, click how about we do that click three dashes uh, we can say you dodged DOD dodged a bullet um, space quote and then we can put in your name end string so if you did not guess the right number it's gonna say click am I doing the Am I doing this right? I'm, I'm getting confused now. If we guess the right number, we get shot. We have to, we have to, yeah, okay. What chamber? All right, let me just continue doing this. I'm getting confused now. You dodged a bullet, end string. Um, okay, next next T right so that's gonna go through our five tries if we get it right so what chamber so what we're trying to do is we're trying to avoid the chamber right we're trying to avoid the right one so you dodged a bullet your name next T so at this point here if you dodge the bullet five times we are gonna to go to um, another space so here's where we're gonna say if you got it wrong if you get it wrong on line 240, this is the part where you typed in the number that was the number the computer guessed, you picked the wrong chamber, you got shot. So the first thing we'll do is we will type in, um, we will sound 10 comma 4. We will, on line 250, we'll type in CLS, I believe it's 4, is red. I have to go back and check that. It's 3 or 4. And then this is where we want to, um, let's print the word, let's print the word bang on this boom on the screen a few different times. So um, for S equals one to 25, uh, print at RND, what was the um, locations? Our locations were from 0 to 511. And we're going to print the word bang. 1, 2, 3, 4. So 508. We are going to say print at random 508. Print at random 508, comma quote, bang, next S. So that's going to put stuff on the screen. 
So we're going to make a sound. We're going to clear the screen red like blood. We're going to put bang on the screen um, 25 times. And then we're going to print something in the middle of the screen here. I need to go back and look at what number that is. So somewhere in the middle of the screen, we said that was right around 2224. So we're going to type in you blew it. And so I'm just going to guess and say that's somewhere around 229. I'm just guessing here. So, so on line 29, we're going to say print at 229, comma. You blew it. And then we will go down to the next line. 229 which was right around y'all if we go down so let's just say right around 260 we'll do another one and here on line 300 we're going to say print at 260 um, n strings which is your name n strings semicolon space bought the bit the dust bit the dust okay i think this is some pretty good logic here let me think this all the way through here because i'm doing this all out loud we're going to clear the screen we're going to print our little intro title we're going to ask for your name we're going to input your name we're going to clear the screen we're going to say there is one bullet six chambers we're going to Pick a random number. We're going to make a sound like we're spinning the barrel up to nine times with little dots coming across the screen. We will then um, um, then pick the bullet chamber number, which is number between one and six. We're then going to give you five tries to not guess the right number. So what chamber? Input A. And now we're going to say if you enter a number that's less than one, or is greater than six, then go back and ask you again. If you guessed the right number, we're gonna go to the one that says you died. So that is right around here. That's around 240. So right around here, we're gonna say, if you pick the right number, then we are gonna go to 240. 240 is right here. This is the beginning of the part where we make a sound, we clear the screen, and we say, you bit the dust. Um, now, we're gonna leave a blank in here. I'm just gonna call this a spacer for just a minute. So now, we're gonna dodge the bullet. Now, if you manage to dodge a bullet, then we were, we're going to then say, we're gonna go to 320. So right around here, we're gonna say, go to 320. And in 320, we're going to clear the screen. Clear the screen in a random color. We'll make a high note, so we're going to say sound 200, comma, 4. We're going to print your name strings, semicolon, quote, space, survived, S-U-R-V-I-V-E-D. -E um, okay. And then this is the part where we're going to say, would you like to play again? So we will print at somewhere in the center of the screen. So let's just say somewhere around 288. So we're going to say print at 288. Um, print at 288, comma, play again, comma, y slash n semicolon now then on 360 we're going to input um input a string and we're going to say if a string equals yes then go to what's the beginning of my program then go to 10 10 if a strings equals no, then end, which will end the program, and 390 is going to go to 350. 
So we've typed in 39 lines of code to run this program. I think it will work. And I'm sorry that I know this sounds like complete maddening um, lunacy, but I'm trying to think about the language and the programming ahead of time um, so I don't have to re-enter this 15 times on the computer because it's going to be a heck of a lot easier to do it now than it is on the color computer. So line 10 is going to clear the screen. We're going to print Russian Roulette 1.0, copyright 2016, Steve Strobridge. License to Tandy Corporation. What is your name? Input your name. Clear the screen. There is one bullet, six chambers. We will then say spinning barrel, click, 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 click. Um, we're going to make a sound. Then we're going to randomize the bullet that we're going to choose. We're going to give you five tries to guess the chamber. On each try, we're going to say this is try number one, what chamber? You're going to type in a number between one and six. If it's less than one or greater than six, it's going to go back and ask you to type it in again. After you've typed it in, if your answer equals the number that was randomly chosen for the bullet, we are going to go down to line 240, which is the dead sequence. You are dead. Um, if you don't answer that and then go to 240, it's going to print a click sound. It's going to um, print click. You dodged a bullet. Um, and then it's going to say next. But what I need to do here is I actually need to um, we need to put a sound in there. We forgot to put in a sound. We'll, we'll deal with that, right? So, um, actually, let me go ahead and insert that now. This is why I'm editing on a computer, right? So, insert. So, let me drag this down here. So, line 220 now prints, becomes the sound command. Sound 128 comma 1. That's just the right mid-range sound. So, you dodged a bullet, name string, which is whatever your name, click. Next T. When this is done, it's going to go to 320, which means you survived. 320 is a spacer. 320 is the, um, actually is the, it should be 330. I can actually, well, I can, that's, I can so I put a spacer in here. Uh, okay, so this one says you bit the dust. Okay, so no, I take that back. This one needs to go to after it's after you've died and you bit the dust. This needs to go to 360. So this is going to go to 360. 360 is basically saying, would you like to play again? This one here, um, if you die, you dodged a bullet, next, 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 go to 320. Instead of 320, it actually needs to go to 330. So this needs to go to 330. After you've guessed this five times, if you survive, it'll go to 330, which is the you survive thing. If you don't do it, so here's bang, you died, you blew it, your name bit the dust, go to 360, which says, would you like to play again? So now we're at 40 lines of code. This is a huge, huge, huge program, but I think this will work. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch over to my Coco and we're going to try to make this run. So pardon me while I bounce back and forth between the screens. So if I type in list right now, there's nothing here. So here's my code 10 CLS RND 8 20 print quote R U S S I A N R O U L E T T E 1.0 semicolon. I actually want that to... Uh, no, we don't. We'll, we'll take away the whole line. Russian Roulette 1.0. 30. Print quote. Copyright 2016. Steve Strobridge. 40 is going to print quote. Licensed to Tandy Corp. C-O-R-P. C-O-R-P. Dot. End quote. Line 50 is going to print at 160 comma what is your name I'm gonna end that with a semicolon so the printing will will get mushed right there line 60 is going to say input n string which is going to be remembered as your name line 70 is going to clear the screen again CLS RND 8 line 80 is going to print there is one bullet six chambers Line 90 is going to say C for chamber equals R and D 6. Actually, oh no, so, okay, so hold on. This one, this one, R and D, this one was 9. B 
because this is how we're going to pretend like we're spinning it around a certain number of times. C equals random 9. 100 print quote spinning barrel semicolon 110 for T equals 1 to C which means I'm going to start at 1 and I'm going to count up to whatever number C was. 120 is print quote dot quote semicolon so I'm going to print dots across the screen but they're going to stay stuck together. 130 is going to sound 24 comma 1, a fairly low frequency tone. 140 is going to say next C. Now, 150 is where we choose the bullet itself. What, where is the, where is the bullet in the barrel? So I'm going to say B equals RND 6. So now the, oops, i got to type that again. B equals RND 6. We are now, why is my thing doing ra random 6? So now we have decided we're going to put the bullet in one of those six chambers. The computer is going to decide that. It's going to decide that one time. Now on line 60, we're going to get our five tries. So I'm going to say for T equals one, two, five. 170 is going to say print quote try number semicolon T colon quote what chamber quote semicolon. That's going to say print try number one what chamber semicolon I'm now going to input a so now 180 is going to say input a input your answer 190 a little bit of logic here if a is less than one or a is greater than six then go to 170 and ask the same question again um, I don't actually have to put the word go to in there I could just say then 170 Okay, line 200 is going to say, if your answer is the number that the bullet was in, then go to 240. I don't have to say go to, then 240. But I'm going to put it in, then go to, for, then go to 240. All right, so if you guessed the bullet number, you are, you're dead. All right, so that's line 200. Line 210, print, quote, dash, 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 click, dash, dash, dash space you dodged a bullet uh, I'll put a space in there semicolon n string so it's going to reference you by your name you dodged a bullet Steve okay 220 is going to sound 128 comma 1 that's the click sound 230 is going to say next T is going to take us through all five tries now 240 basically says well you didn't die because you're still here so we're going to go to 330, which is the victory. Go to 330. 250 is the low frequency sound, meaning that you didn't survive. Uh, 240 says go to 330. I've screwed something up here in my code. Uh, 240 says go to 330. Somewhere earlier in my code, I said if A equals B, then go to 240. That should actually be... Um, if A equals B, that now needs to be 250. So line 200 needs to go to 250. Got to fix that. Using line numbers gets to be very tricky. So let me go back to 250. 250, before I do that, let's go back here and let's fix this. So I need to, on line 200, if A equals B, if your answer, if your, if your answer equals the bullet, then go to 250. Let's list that through. Let's see how it looks. All right, B equals random six. You have your five tries. Let me fix that too. It's 164 T equals one, two, five. Space it out better so you can see it better. For T equals one to five. Print try number T, what chamber? Input A. If, you're, if your A is invalid, go back and ask again. If your A equals B, then go to line 250, which is the death sequence. If not, it's gonna say click you dodged a bullet, your name. It's gonna make a sound, it's gonna to go to the next try all five times. 240 is assuming that you have not died, and so it's jumping down to 330, which is the victory sequence. Now we're on 250, which is the death sequence. We start off by making a low frequency sound, so we're gonna do sound 10 comma four. 260 is gonna be CLS4, but I don't remember if CLS4 was it. Let me just try that real quick. CLS4 is red, so I guessed it right. So 250 makes a low frequency sound. 260 is going to say CLS4, clear the screen in red like blood. Um, 274 um, screen equals 1, 225. 
to 80 is going to say print at rnd 508 quote bang semicolon uh, 290 is going to say print uh, 290 is going to say next x next s okay so that prints 25 bangs on the screen hopefully very quickly 300 is going to print at 229 comma quote you blew it exclamation point quote semicolon um, 310 is going to print at 260 comma your name end string quote semicolon bit the dust exclamation point ended in a semicolon so it doesn't wrap off the screen bit the dust um, 320 says go to 360 hope I didn't screw that up says go to 360 so now here at 330 this is my victory thing so CLS RND 8 clear the screen in a random color uh, 340 says sound 200 comma 4 high frequency sound this is something nicer okay um, 350 says print end strings semicolon survived couple exclamation points and the quote okay then on 360 print at 288 which is lower on the screen comma play again y slash n for yes comma no put a semicolon there so it's going to print lower on the screen would you like to play again is asking for a y or an n for yes or no 370 is going to input a string okay 380 says if a string equals to yes then go to 10 390 is going to say if a string is equal to no then end the program and then 400 is going to go back to 350 actually 360 so let's go back to 360 and keep asking the same question again so i think that's my program i hope it's my program let's save this now so we're gonna call this russian roulette 1 0 rr 1 0 russian roulette 1 0 i'm going to save that let me dir it make sure it's on my disc rr 10 so that's cool I'm put on my headphones let's see how well this works let's run this program here's my old-fashioned spectral associates screens russian roulette 1.0 copyright 2016 steve strawbridge licensed to tandy corporation what is your name steve okay <laughs> here's my first bug there is one bullet six chambers spinning barrel nf i don't even remember what nf stands for but let's love what does 140 say next c uh okay so somewhere around 140 um list 100 through 140 somewhere around 140 okay so 140 should actually say next t uh next t okay let's try it again russian roulette 1.0 copyright 2016 steve strawbridge license of tandy corporation what is your name my name is steve okay i just realized there's something else i should do in here now right. there is one bullet six chambers try number one what chamber let's try chamber number one Although the one thing that's bothering me is the fact that where it's printing, I need to um, skip a line. So let's list 100 through 140 again. And okay, let's list 150 through 190. Okay, let's add a line in the middle. Let's add a 165 and just put the word print. So it's going to skip a line. Because of that last semicolon, the question is mashed up right next to it. I don't want it there. So I just added in a line 165 that says print. Let's try it one more time. Russian Roulette 1.0. What is your name? Steve. Okay. There's one bullet. Six chambers. Spinning barrel. Brrr, spun the barrel. What chamber? Let's try one. Syntax error in 280. <laughs> print at RND 508. Oh, there's got to be a comma there, right? Right. So 280 should say print at RND 508 comma quote bang semicolon. All right. See, we're re we're debugging our code in real time here. So let's try it again. What is your name, Steve? Okay. 
There's one bullet, six chambers, spinning barrel. What chamber number? Let's try one. You dodged a bullet, Steve. Try number two. What chamber? Let's try... Now, <laughs> here's another bug in this. I could keep guessing the same number. If I try it in one again, you dodged a bullet. Now that I know it's not one, I could keep trying this there. What chamber? Okay, you survive. Play again. So you can kind of screw around with this a little bit and mess with the logic. But let's, uh, yes, I want to play again. Russian Roulette, what is your name? Steve. All right. What chamber? One. You dodge a bullet. Chamber two. Chamber three. Chamber four. Chamber five. Ah, bang. That's the bang on the screen. You blew it. Steve bit the dust. Play again. Yes. What is your name? Fred. What chamber? One. You dodged a bullet, Fred. What chamber? Two. You dodged a bullet, Fred. What chamber? Three. You dodged a bullet, Fred. What chamber? Four. You dodged a bullet. What chamber? Five. Ah, you blew it. Fred bit the dust. Play again. Yes or no. If I hit no, it ends the program. Not bad. Not bad. I need to save this again. I need to fix my bug. So I need to save this as RR10. Resave it. Unlike modern operating systems, if you try to save a file with the same name, it's not going to say this file already exists. Do you wish to overwrite? So you got to be real careful. You can type in the wrong thing and completely wipe something out. But this is Russian Roulette 1.0. Um, and, um, you know, it's just a little bit fancier of a game. It's um, making your computer start to look like it's doing what you want it to do, and it's making things look more like a real game. What is your name? OG. Okay, there's one bullet, six chambers. Let's try seven. See? It won't let you type in a number that's not valid, right? So what chamber? Four. You dodged a bullet, OG. Three. Six. Four. Five. OG survived. I actually survived. How do you like that? Would you like to play again? Yes. What is your name? Boogie. Spinning the barrel. What chamber? One. You dodge a bullet, Boogie. What chamber? Two. You dodge a bullet, Boogie. You dodge a bullet. Ah, uh, bang, 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 bang. You blew it. Boogie bit the dust. Play again. No. All right. So, enough of that enough of that my entire code still made itself to roughly 400 lines i made a few mistakes in um, trying to remember the syntax i forgot some things we fixed some things on the way hopefully you were able to follow this not only in typing it in but more importantly in actually comprehending what the heck i just did but it's a little bit bigger of a program than the original one. We fleshed it out a little bit. We've made it a little bit fancier, added a little bit of color, a little bit of sound, um, and giving you the choice to play it again. So this is 1.0. We can always go back and add to this and make a 1.1, a 1.2, 1.3. So as we learn more commands, we'll probably do that. Because one of the things that we should be putting in here is checking to make sure you didn't pick the same thing over and over and over again. So... Um, you know, um, that it is what it is. So it's kind of a guessing game. It's kind of playing with random numbers and using a lot of these statements of if and then and all kinds of good stuff like that. So that's it. That's it for now. This was a completely new um, video that's not from the book. It's more of let's put this to the test. Let's do something real. And hopefully it was mildly amusing or entertaining or informative, or maybe it wasn't. And if it isn't, I apologize. But that's it. I'm out of here. I'm the Original Gamer Stevie Strobe. I'll see you next time. Peace out and bye-bye, everybody.